What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Buchard i150 integrated amplifier, let's go. So, I've had this bad boy for, I don't know, 30, 45, maybe 60 days. I've been listening to it a lot. I'm gonna tell you about it. I'm gonna tell you what it sounds like, it's tonal character, treble mid-range bass, speaker pairings, features, and all that good stuff. So, let's throw the main features just on the screen and the specs so you guys can check that stuff out. I'm gonna take you through the standout features and there's a lot guys, so stay with me. So first and foremost, I think this unit is absolutely incredible looking. It's built like a tank and its aesthetics are definitely for me. The remote control is a good size. It's easy to use, it's highly functional. Maybe you don't like remote controls. Maybe you wanna use the cell phone app instead. Yes, I said cell phone app. This thing has that. You can adjust pretty much anything you want to. Let's see here. So cell phone app, you can control subwoofer crossover low pass. Um, you can control gain for the subwoofer, phase, distance, not phase, sorry, polarity, uh, and distance. Same with the speakers. You could adjust distance, you could adjust gain independently, and high pass. So I, I know a lot of people, when you guys set up subwoofers, you like to high pass to your speakers, take that bass out of the speakers, send it to the subwoofer, even for a stereo configuration. Now, that's not how I like to set up my subwoofers, but I know a lot of people they say for their rooms, it's just a huge improvement. Everything sounds cleaner. And I, I get that. I've lived in, in different places and I've had different rooms where using high pass works great. For me in this space, not using high pass is a better option, but it's got high pass functionality all built in from the cell phone app. Uh, there's manual EQ adjustments and room correction. Guys, holy crap. So, and the room correction works. I tested it out, it's very good. Where do we begin? Room correction is going to be super helpful for a lot of people. I'm lucky. I've got a dedicated space. I could throw up acoustic treatment all over this room if I want to, and I do have a fair amount. Most people don't have that option. Most people, their stereo is in a shared space, whether it be the living room. Guys, I, I've got some guys in my Discord. They got their stereo in a shared space with the kids' playroom where the stereo is like gated off. You know what I'm saying? Like we put our stereos where they fit. Not every room is ideal. Room correction is going to help a ton. A guy recently left a comment on my Bucard A500 video, because uh, that has the same room correction functionality built in, and he said the reason he went with that is he's got a condo. He lives in Japan, he said, and he said he's got a ton of windows. And to acoustically treat that room would have just been an absolute nightmare. So he turned to digital room correction instead using Bucard's A500 speakers, and he said it sounded awesome. I was so happy to hear that. Anyhow, back to this amp. So. Yeah, guys, that cell phone app, there's a lot going on. It works really well. I didn't have any dropouts. It didn't glitch on me. It worked flawlessly. I was really happy to see that. Uh, moving around back, there's a ton of options and in inputs and outputs. So we have dual mono subwoofer outputs. We have left and right pre-out outputs. So if you wanna do a stereo pair of subwoofers, you can. In addition, oof, almost threw this bad boy across the room. In addition to the mo dual mono subwoofer outputs, of course, pre-outs are generally gonna be for adding a stereo power amp or monoblock power amplifiers. But with as much wattage as this thing has, I don't think you're gonna need that. This bad boy does 150 watts times two at eight ohms, 300 watts times two into four ohms. So there's a ton of power on tap. Um, what else do we have around back? A ton of digital inputs. We've got two optical, one coaxial, one USB, and uh, one uh, left and right analog input. For my listening impressions, I took my DAC out of the chain, so I didn't use my Denifrips Aries 2. Instead, I just used my Blue Sound Node 2i coaxial out into the coaxial in of the Bucart i150. So we're using the i150's integrated amp. It's I'm sorry, <laughs> integrated DAC, and it's just handling everything. So listening impressions. Um, of course, by the way, I did use Bucard's own uh, S400 speakers during my listening impressions, as well as Focal Aria 906, which are, you know, totally different sound, um, and a special speaker that I just got recently that we'll talk about towards the end. So, tonal character, starting at the top end, uh, and just to be clear here, guys, I, I could essentially just wrap this whole thing up with a few words. Clarity is the name of the game here. Oh my goodness, there was so much clarity, resolution, dark background, no distortion. It was very, it was impressive for me because I normally use separate preamp with separate mono blocks costing $6,000. So I'm stepping down to something almost one third the price and I was still impressed. That's saying a lot, you know what I mean? Usually when I step down to cheaper amps, 
it takes me a little bit of time to adjust to the loss of refinement, the loss of clarity, the loss of effortlessness and all those things. I didn't really experience that going from my $6,000 separates to the more affordable Bucart i150. Now, just to be clear, am I saying the Bucart i150 can go toe to toe with $6,000 plus separates? No, what I am saying is it wasn't much of a step down either and that's saying something. Anyhow, I digress. Back to what it sounds like. The top end is gonna to be a little bit on the forward side of neutral. It's not gonna be sharp, uh, aggressive, or rigid, or grainy in any way whatsoever. It's gonna project into the room in a forward manner. Um, it's gonna give effortless detail at all volume levels, high volume, medium volume, low volume, no problem. And if you like to listen at lower volumes, it does have a low volume mode um, called low level enhancement that gives you a little bit more bass and a little bit more clarity at lower volumes. But I found that uh, I didn't need to use that functionality because I felt the low volume performance of this amp was just fantastic as is. Um, back to the listening impressions. I keep getting sidetracked here. Sorry, guys. So look, the treble's great. Mostly neutral, a little bit forward, ton of sparkle, ton of air, ton of clarity, ton of openness. You got it? Ooh, I almost, I need to be careful. Let me scoot back a little bit, huh? Moving down to the mid-range, Mid-range, again, it's gonna be clear, it's gonna be clean, it's gonna be open, it's gonna be expansive. Now, it is gonna lean on the cooler side of neutral. It's not gonna be warm, luscious, juicy, rich, and things like that. And I know a lot of people think they like that, and maybe you do like that, there's nothing wrong with that. Me, personally, I prefer things to lean a little bit cool because I find it gives me more of a sense of openness, clarity, detail, and things like that. And that's what I like in my musical experience. Now, um, of course, you know, the speakers you add to it are gonna change that up. I'm telling you just what the amp sounds like on its own. If I add the S400 Mark II in the mix, for example, the S400 Mark II, they have a little bit of warmth in the mid-range, obviously, so that's gonna change the whole presentation. This amp is actually a fantastic match for Bukhart's own speakers and other speakers, but we'll get to that in a second. Moving down to the bass. The bass from this amp has a ton of control. I didn't feel like it was boosted. I didn't feel like it was thin. I felt like it was simply accurate, fast, agile, controlled, and I guess controlled, uh, you know, let's throw effortless in there too. There, there was a sense of ease to the presentation just from top to bottom that this amplifier brought. And I was impressed. I was. Um, it, it, I wasn't expecting this much clarity with, with the, it's the ease of clarity. A lot of the time when I try out cheaper amps, I find myself really digging into that volume knob to get the dynamics, to get the air, to get the openness. And I didn't have to do that here. And that's what made me the happiest. So those are my listening impressions. Now, um, I used Bucart's own S400 Mark IIs. They sounded fantastic. I used Focal Aria 906s because those are voiced the total opposite of the Bucart S400. Both were a good match. Obviously, the Focal Aria 906 is more analytical compared to the Bucard S400. It's going to have a little bit of a brighter top end, a little bit of a cooler mid-range, and less bass, again, compared to the S400. So, you know, using something like the i150 that is voiced similarly to the Focal Aria 906, you're doubling down on that sound, so it was, like, super detailed. Um, I wouldn't say it was super analytical, but the mid-range was a little bit recessed when using the Focal Aria 906. Switching to the Bucard S400 definitely gave me more of a balanced sound. Um, that like just bass quantity that the S400 brings to the table was under great control. It was tight, it was clean, it was articulate. Again, it didn't really seem to matter which speakers I was using. I also used the more affordable Polk Reserve R100s. That turned out to be a fantastic pairing as well. And then I started wondering, I thought to myself, you know, this is a Class D amp, Class D amps, um, everyone knows at this point, you know, the cheap ones, not so good, the more expensive ones, they can get pretty good now. Everyone knows that, right? But I was curious, you know, like how hard can I push this amp? Because recently I got a pair of speakers in that I got for myself, these aren't review samples, that are pretty resolving. They're priced way out of the league of this amp. They're $8,000 a pair MSRP. It's the Focal Canta number ones. And I was curious, because those have beryllium tweeters. They are crazy resolving, crazy detailed. If this amp has any hint of sibilance, harshness, or graininess, 
I thought it would definitely show on the Focal Cancer number one. So I pulled those bad boys out and I threw them on the stands. I kicked back and I started playing some music again with the internal DAC. And let's, let's be honest here, a $2,500 amp is not designed for $8,000 a pair of speakers. So I was expecting not the greatest sound. Again, I was surprised. Um, there was no graininess. There was no harshness. There was no sibilance. The Bucard uh, I-150, of course, was able to drive the Focal Cancer number ones effortlessly and to volumes much louder than I would ever care to listen at. Again, with a great sense of control over the bass, mid-range, and treble regions. So I put it to the test as much as I could. And if I had to just wrap this thing up in a few words, it's clarity, openness, effortlessness, great separation, and tonal character that is mostly neutral, slightly cool, and detailed, right? So I think this is for anyone that's going to appreciate a ton of clarity in the top end, anyone who likes a good open mid-range, anyone who's looking for a lot of control over the base of their speakers, anyone who's looking for a ton of functionality by way of that cell phone app, anyone who's looking for room correction. I mean, like, <laughs> this does a lot in such a small form factor and at a reasonable price. I don't have any comparisons for you guys because the reality is I haven't heard a lot of amps in the two to $3,000 price range. So the only thing I can really tell you is I've heard amps that are under $1,000 and then I've heard amps like my separates that are over $6,000. Um, this is a huge, and I mean huge step up from something in the five, $600 price range. Um, it's night and day. For me, a five, $600 amp, like even something as good as the IOTA VX SA3, which is highly just people love it. It's raved about. Be honest, guys, I'm a little spoiled. I'm going to admit this. I'm going to be a little bit of a snob here, but if I had to listen to it for more than a couple of days, I'd be pretty upset. I would be just compared to my reference gear. The IOTA VX SA3 just, it doesn't sound all that good to my ears. For the money, for the $550 price tag, it's great. Don't get me wrong. But compared to the gear I have, it's just too much of a downgrade for me. I just can't do it. I can't. This I could absolutely do. This didn't even really feel like a downgrade. Sure, I could tell in certain areas my $6,000 separates were better, a little bit better with the refinement, a little bit better with the low volume presentation and things like that. But this was really what I would consider a huge jump from entry level, but not too far away from the higher end stuff, if that makes sense. Um, and I think that's great. And if I didn't already say it, it's got built-in Bluetooth. Hello, little antenna for anyone who's interested in that. So I don't think I have much else to tell you guys. At the end of the day, it's a fantastic amp with just a ridiculous amount of functionality. Uh, if there's a unique need or feature you want, chances are this bad boy has it. If you've got any questions, ask in the comments below. This channel also does have a Discord. It is free. Link is in the description. Until next time, later.